What is a how-to video? I hear you screaming and shouting at your PC monitor right now from in here, the land of the internet. Well, how-to videos, at least in relation to the internet, are typically step-by-step -step guides and often a simple piece to camera. They are usually of a relatively low quality. The subject of said videos will typically be talking to the camera, like me a minute ago, and rating over the footage, like now, or... The actual video quality ranges from stuff like this, a high quality home camcorder, to low quality videos such as webcams and mobile phone cameras. The quality is then often reduced more so due to high compression ratios in order to limit video size files for upload and possibly due to lack of knowledge by the user. YouTube is available for all so it is probable to assume that not all uploaders are knowledgeable in all technological aspects. However, the quality doesn't actually seem to deter users from watching these videos, or any other videos on YouTube for that matter. Taking Jason Wangster's windmill video as an example, the footage is of very low quality and the editing is done with what looks like Windows Movie Maker. But well, the audience it has reached is phenomenal, gathering over 2 million views. <laughs> Jenkins suggests that participatory culture offers us relatively low barriers to artistic expression and civil engagement. This essentially means that anybody can make these because the production values don't have to be that of a Hollywood blockbuster. Writing last year, Meg Carter informed us that The amount of professionally produced film and TV that is coming online is growing fast. In terms of the beloved how-to video then, the only relevant uploads are normally either spoofs or are directly lifted from existing television or film, rather than being brand new content developed on the web. Chris Rock's How Not To Get Your Ass Kicked By The Police video is a perfect example of this. First, obey the law. Carjacking, armed robbery, arson. The uploader, Insane Nutter, good username, is in no way affiliated with Chris Rock or the television show, so in a way are these professional videos user generated. Without the uploader would they be available to us wide an audience. Jenkins continues to suggest that within this idea of teaching and learning there is some type of informal mentorship whereby what is known by the most experienced is passed along to the novices. But isn't this the purpose of the how to video, sharing knowledge with other users, or is there a more knowledge is power effect that is actually present within this YouTube community, a sort of competitive culture? To elaborate on this further, let's sample in particular online guitar performances. In an article in the New York Times in 2006, Virginia Heffernan described his performances as carrying a modesty clause, where the players often exhibit a kind of anti-showmanship. Featuring in this article is an interview with the guitarist Fun 2, who features in possibly the most viewed and discussed video of this genre. Simply titled Guitar, he saw Fun 2 shoot internet fame and become one of YouTube's premier stars. When asked what he thought about the amount of attention gained from the video, Funtu replied, Some say my vibrato is quite sloppy, and I agree with that, so these days I'm doing my best to improve my vibrato skin. This is obviously a very modest statement to make from the man being referred to by some YouTubers as the new Jimi Hendrix. Is this actually the case with all guitar performances? Does this modesty clause apply to all online guitar performances? At the time of filming, the original guitar video was over 2,500 responses. If we whittle out the spam, around half of these are guitar or other instrument based videos. Awesome Guitar Solo by Dav Guitar, who apparently can't spell, is one of the first encounters. As with a lot of other videos of this kind, it adopts a very similar mise en scene to Fun 2's original guitar video. This modesty clause seems to have already been abandoned by titling the video Awesome, which obviously connotes a high level of skill from the player. Another video titled Guitar Cannon The Best is a blatant challenger to Funtu's internet crown. The title immediately gives the impression of a level of arrogance from the uploader, suggesting a level of competitiveness by at least some members within this online community. Perhaps the main reason why people boast in these videos is to gain more views. Is this the main part of the competitiveness within these videos? The more views, the more powerful a player will become within the YouTube community. Concentrating now on how to videos on the whole, this teaching and learning aspect within participatory culture is described by Jenkins as a reciprocal exchange of knowledge. Users are adding their own ideas to a pool of videos that are accessible to all wishing to learn. 
Juhas, however, has a contrasting opinion with YouTube as a learning medium, claiming it is poor for education. Whilst this may be true for something like, say, a video of a dancing dog, this does not mean there are no learning sources available on YouTube. Watching others play instruments, for example, could still be a mimical form of learning by seeing. Burgess writes in a 2009 book claiming online video invites others to participate and rewards repetition. Whilst this is definitely true with fun to use a guitar video, for example, I don't think this is necessarily true with how-to videos. Although both types of video can provide their own way of teaching others, how-to videos tend to be a search for video, get results type of there. As YouTube has become more prominent in our web browsing habits in recent years, it is logical to assume that it will affect the way we learn and allow us to choose what we learn about. With the breadth of knowledge available to all at the click of a mouse, users will continue to share and learn with simple tutorial how-to videos at the forefront. Jenkins' idea of a reciprocal exchange of knowledge is sure to continue and prosper with the development of YouTube and online video. And at least there aren't any pop-ups.